we had to he had to make a list and so he made a list of women so everything that he could recollect and there was nearly 100 women on there and so you're talking about the hundred. Where are you going back? That he to? wrote on the list. Now you talking about why y'all? You talking about in his lifetime, or are you talking about why y'all were dealing with each other? Okay, so we have to define these things. Um, so I did not do a good job at defining if it was the lifetime of of his lifetime or if it was specific to just. Um, well, heck, he been dating you since he was nineteen. Right. So, so in my mind. To, to me that's a lifetime right yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. in my mind so i'm thinking um at least since we have met um since we were 19 he wrote uh, he wrote down a hundred names yes what did you think when you saw that that <laughs> <laughs> the name is silly <laughs> Like, oh God. I mean, what do you really do with that? Like, I don't, I don't know. I was just like, okay, I, forg I'm a, I forgive you for all these things. So this is actually part two. If you haven't watched part one, make sure to check that out on my channel. In this next clip, Danaya Jackson is explaining the video she made where she's cursing people. Where's my Bible at? Who got a, I didn't bring my physical Bible in here. You said, You're, Psalm 109, go to verse like, it's like nine, nine, ten. 11 okay you said you found let their let their children be fatherless let their <laughs> <laughs> let, <laughs> like i'm quoting the scripture it's a plea for help against false accusers now many people for the mouth of the wicked <laughs> where you want me to start on verse okay. two um go it's like what i actually said is like verse like 9 10 11, like oh, this is good though for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me yes. they have spoken against me with a lying tongue they compassed me about also with the words of hatred and fought against me without a cause for my love they are my adversaries but i give myself unto prayer and they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love set thou a wicked man over me and let satan stand at his right hand when he shall be judged, let him be condemned and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless and his wife of a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. That's let what them I said. see. He said, That's what I said. That's what I said. <laughs> and everybody's like, she's cursing people. I'm like, did you read your Bible? The day, the day, you, <laughs> you mad because I know how to pray and you don't? Like that is not a me problem. That's a you problem at this point. Why are you gonna curse the kids? Why are you gonna say that kids gonna be vagabonds? Why Listen. are you gonna do that? <laughs> he said, "Let their children be continually Why? vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath, and let the stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his so posterity now we mad be cut off." I'm quoting the word of God. <laughs> We mad because I'm quoting the word of God. <laughs> Seriously, that's what I want to know. Why everybody so upset? Because I quoted the word of God. So you sat there and read this. Did you read this to to the people, or you? Wrote I didn't it? read the whole thing. I read those the the, the vagabonds, the, the father, the, let, let them be fatherless. Because you know why? Because <laughs> I knew that that would get a rise out of out of a lot of people, and they don't read their Bible, so they don't know where it's at. But this is the word of God. When you come against God's people, he gives us words. He he literally, like, we don't have to think of these prayers. They're already there in all the Psalms for every situation that we go through. When we're depressed, when we have anxiety, when we don't, when we're broke, when he gives us words to say. And these are not necessarily literal words, right? So if we want to get into the theology, since I am whole master of Christian ministry at okay. Roberts University. For real? Yes. You know when it got a, a master's in divinity? At 4.0. A little nerdy stuff. A little nerdy stuff. Oh Lord, I don't want that smoke with you then. <laughs> so, so if we want to get into the actual, okay, like let's get into what I said in Psalm one, one oh nine. When we look at the text, we have to look at the literary, how it was written, the literary context, and all that. Well, it's not a literal meaning right this is an exaggeration and a plea for help because this is describing the pain that i'm feeling on the inside of me right but god has given me the proper words to to say that will 
help me to stay from like sitting against my my brother per se and saying something that would really condemn them like yeah. in in an ungodly yeah. way she said that she wanted a rise out of people and you know what Danaya, that's what you got that's what you got and i just don't understand how she could stay with this man go on tour with this man knowing that he was cheating the whole time selling these books making these videos in his car <sighs> anyway this next clip in this next clip she's talking about how Derek made her sick to her stomach so sick she had to go to the hospital in my opinion i feel like she should have been throwing that those curses at Derek, but instead she was throwing it at other people but she was so in love with this man I, I was just trying to survive. At that point, by the time I got to Denver, I was like unhealthily, like skinny. Like I was malnourished. Were I hadn't depressed? been eating. I was depressed. I was malnourished. Like literally, I, I'll try to I'll try to pull up a picture of my phone so you can see it. But I was malnourished. Like they had to like force feed me to like get me to back to a state where I could just eat properly. Why? Um, all the stuff that I had been dealing holding with in. and holding in, like I was dying. Had I not left Georgia at the time, I would have died in Georgia. Like I had been in the hospital. They can't figure out what's going on with me. I'm bleeding out of places. They're like, I don't know why you're bleeding like this. There was so much stress and stuff going on with my body at the time. Had I not left at the time that I did, I, I think I would not be here right now. Who oh, Lord. I had past situations where I'll get so sick to my stomach to where I can't eat just because I'm overthinking everything and all I want to do is sleep. So I can only imagine what this man has put her through to where she had to go to the hospital. It's very sad that she had to deal with this, but I'm happy she's coming out and telling her side of the story. Exactly. Listen, shout out to all three of them therapists. <laughs> they had their work cut out for them. And yes, so... <laughs> And so what was the breaking point for you to get up and leave and go to Denver? So when he said when he said I was crazy, because I'm like, you need to be delivered. We need to go now. And this is what needs to happen. So he called <laughs> you your know? mom and you said, forget it. I'm going. I was like, it took a couple of days. It took a couple of days. And I was like, OK, I feel like I can't just leave. So I'm like, OK, we need to go to therapy. We need to work this out. And I'm texting him because he's like not answering my calls. He's like, if you come to the condo, I'm going to call the police on you. Um, all these. I'm like, OK. I said, I was texting him. I'm like, okay, we have to figure out how to work this out. Um, the best way for us to do this is for you to come here and we can figure, figure it out. Like, and he was basically like, I'm not coming back there. Like I would rather be separate, separated from you than to be miserable um, with you in the same house. And I was like, mom, my bags are packed. When can you be here? And she was on the flight the next morning, flew in, and we drove. Or I can't even say we drove. I drove like 80 miles an hour <laughs> to All Denver. All the way from Atlanta from, to Denver. Yes. How long is that trip? It's a 24-hour drive. I drove the first 15 hours pretty much straight through. She had to force me to stop driving. You were just motivated on adrenaline. I was, I was, yeah, adrenaline and I was just like so upset and then I was kind of scared too because I'm like, I can't believe like I'm actually doing this. He's going to freak out when he realizes that I'm gone because I didn't say anything. I didn't send, uh, so my phone was actually, right, my, my phone was actually turned off at the time because there was like a little financial crisis that started happening around that time too. So my phone was actually turned off so I was like, this is perfect. You ain't gonna just slide by that financial crisis that had your phone cut off. My phone was cut off at well, the time. Well, in a 9,000 square foot house and, and your phone get cut off. He was working at the condo, so. <laughs> it could have been a financial crisis, it's just uh, uh, oversight of Okay. The bill being paid. Yeah. Because you can't have a 9,000 square foot house. I don't know. I wasn't even involved with the finances, so that's what I, I've been told. So. You've I, been told? Yeah, because I wasn't involved in this. He so just told I, you what? It's a financial crisis. So anybody that's married, please comment down below. Is there only one person in the relationship that is in charge of the money and the other person's just out the loop? Because that's kind of what she said. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have um, a rainy day account to the side because there's no way I'm going to be trusting this man who's been cheating on me with over 100 women. Um be in charge of our money 
And he's probably spending that money on those women. Oh, okay. No. A text message. You told me sent the text message you saying he wanted a divorce. When was that? That was September 29, 2022. And where were you when you get, received that text message? I, we were both at home. He was upstairs. I was downstairs on the couch. Um, I had just actually come back from, um, I did a freedom group where you basically, you know, you're going through freedom with all these people. You're talking about stuff with a group of women and stuff like that, you know, confidentiality. We're talking about forgiveness. And I was I was like, I'm going to go home. I'm going to say, you know, I forgive him for anything, anything that I've been holding on to or been, has been coming out of me. I, I, and I did that. I said, I forgive you. Anything like that I have been doing that has shown unforgiveness, I forgive you for that. And the next words out of his mouth was, or via text, should I say, was, um, I was done with us in this marriage after I said that. And I was like, Okay, Lord, you, this is what uh, this is what forgiveness gives you. <laughs> you said I forgive you of everything, and he said I want out of the marriage. Yes. Yes. Now to even make to spice it up, because I like spice. Um, a couple of days before that, <laughs> two day about two days before that, we had, we were intimate. We were intimate. And then the next day, he's at, like, this is leading up to the text message. The next day, he was like, um, I don't want to be intimate with you anymore for two months. I just want you to be completely whole and healed because I know you're still uncovering your um, your rape trauma and all this stuff. And I was like, how does that make any sense? How is that helping us? We just got done talking to someone that said that we need to come closer yeah. together and that I need to be um, communicating to you any whatever discomfort I do have but I'm still able to yeah. do something which I have I was doing stuff <laughs> you know so um, I, was doing stuff. I, I was doing stuff and so um he's like I don't even want that because it just feels like re constant rejection and I'm like okay well how he said do he felt rejected by you and, yeah. and even though you were so wait, what do you I mean? was accommodating in other ways if even if it was like okay right now like penetration is not like the best move right now but i still care about pleasing you yeah so you and take so care i of would do other things right and so it's just like i don't even want that you know like it's, it's just constant rejection i'm just like okay well this is about both of us right so i have to communicate to you like this is what's going on with me and i'm like i need help i need deliverance i'm speaking to such and such you see me speaking to such and such such and such like i'm trying to figure this yeah. thing out because this is important to yeah. me yeah like, I want to figure this out. And he's like, I want you to be completely whole. I don't want to do anything for two months. And then I was just like, okay. And I walked, I walked away. And then the next day, he, two days after that, then he um, sent me the text message. After all that, he decides to divorce her through a text message. Through text message, he couldn't even sit down with her. And anyway... I'm happy she's not with him anymore. I'm happy she's healed and moving on. All this that he put her through, she had to have three therapists, three. And she was still trying to make it work with this man. And he's still out here telling women what they should and shouldn't look for. But really, he's just teaching women the game because he's done it. Everything he's talking about in these videos he makes, he's done it all. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.